You're listening to On the Couch with Dr. Michelle, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. You certainly are, and I hope you are on a couch, chair, comfortable place, wherever you're at in your car, pull on over and watch the show today, or just listen here on latalkradio.com, because as always here on the couch, I have a great guest for you, and we're going to bring him on in just a moment, but um, I want you to think about this, because I talk about this off and on in my show, because it's psychologically oriented, but also there's some other things going on. You know, I'm all into quantum consciousness and creating and thinking and it's scientific uh, Institute of Heart Math information. I do, but you know, a lot of us are stuck on a path still. We're still stuck on that path that we once thought was the right one. And this is the way things are going right now. Feel the energy of the world, the country. It's wonky a little bit, but a lot of our stuff was based on external expectations and social conditioning and implanted stories, lives and values that we had to live. And in most cases, really not true to who we are. Many times we got to find our individuality, who we are, our identity, as it were, if that's a real thing. But today my guest is going to be talking about how we can live a life that feels more authentic, how we can find a sense of meaning, purpose, fulfillment, because he has done that. And uh, he has a great book we'll be talking about as well. Let's bring him on right now. Once again, back by popular demand. Woo! Scott Grace. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. <laughs> ah, it's a pleasure, Ma Michelle, to be on your couch. Oh, thank smelling you. your perfume, <laughs> gazing into your eyes. God bless you. We just got better ratings. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I have my mood lighting. I better pop up the light a little bit. This is getting a little weird on me. I'm, I'm backlit too. But anyway, thank you for jumping in as you were. Mm. That's a little joke, personal joke, guys. Because when, mm. you know, Scott and I were just first chatting before we went live. Do you want to tell them what you were doing? Uh, I was bouncing on a mini trampoline. Yeah, you were. Yeah. And I thought you were going to do the show like that at first, because that would have been kind of cool. But it's you might have gotten possible. tired. What do you think? No, no, no. I once gave a whole talk uh, uh, on how to be, <laughs> how being flexible, how bending with life's ups and downs. And I did it on my rebounder. So I, I'm quite, <laughs> quite efficient with my rebounder. Do, but most people, mo most people are on are on the radio, right? They're not watching me. Well, but, they are right now uh, watching ooh. you. Well, then maybe. So we're, both, we're simultaneous sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, Sounds like multi-dimensional. That's it. So um, <clears throat> how? Look, let's talk about uh, your background. By the way, I have a little sore throat, folks. So. Sure. There he goes, bouncy Scott Grace. You know, he has many sought after gifts, right? You've seen him before, you're seeing him bounce, but hopefully he'll stop so he's not answering my questions. Breathing ah, too hard. <clears throat> Scott is a singer, speaker, workshop leader. You have got to go to one of his workshops. He's a life coach. Of course, he's a stand-up comedian. You used to see him, guys. He used to open for such legends as, may he rest in peace. We love him, Robin Williams, Dana Carvey. Also, you, prom, uh, you rose to prominence, opening for rock star authors, personal growth celebrities, and folks like Deepak Chopra, Dr. John Gray, Louise Hay, Ram Dass. Really? Dr. Bernie Single, Byron Katie, Jack Canfield. What did I do? What did I do with these people? When, I, when you say I opened for them. Well, why don't you share what that meant? And um, because you okay. can spell it much better than I. So most of these authors would like a song. Yeah. Or two before and sometimes during mm -hmm. and certainly after they were done. Right. And I had, and still do, I have the gift of being able to uh, to take a topic. And so I would say, so Bernie or 
Deepak, what's you know what's the topic? Or or I already knew the topic, and I would create a song about the topic. Yes. And at the end, I, I would summarize their talk in spontaneously created song. So that's why I was so sad. Not I my beautiful voice or my, you know, it's just, yeah. I tune into the moment. There you go. What's, what's appropriate, uh, what's in the stream, so to speak. I love that. Mm -hmm. I would be honored if perhaps at the end of the program, you could just do, you know, something, just a flow with sure. being on the couch sure. here. And, and sure. I would just, could we do that? That would be so cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> because we didn't have enough time last time. We, mm. So it was like, oh, wait, Scott, don't go. Uh, and so we were, you know, we had to cut off. We had a hard break with the news. So that's the way it goes, but. Well, I'll tell you what, the book we're going to be talking about as well is, is your biggie. It's called Mindful Masculinity, a book for men and the women who love it. So um, it's a really good book, guys. You should check it out. You can get it everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> well, actually, it's only on Amazon. Well, okay. It's, yeah, you can get it on Amazon. I thought I, I, thought I went into the... Uh, Barnes and Noble. I thought I wanted Maybe to Maybe it's there. I, I just never, I never there. checked. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Anyway. I, know, I have a few copies if anyone wants to come to Mexico. Cool. <laughs> All right. That's good. <laughs> cool. I love it. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the story of how you came to sort of create the mindful masculinity. It's a really good book, guys. And um, it includes a lot of cool things about your background as well. So let's let's get into first of all. Why did you write this book? I mean, what were some of the reasons that you know made you just say, you know, what I've got to put this in a book? All this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I've gone from there's something terribly wrong with me as a man to hmm, hmm maybe. <laughs> Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe that's programming. Maybe that's, <laughs> you know, shame from childhood. Maybe yeah. it's a collection of conclusions right. that I've drawn from, from trauma yeah. in the schoolyard, being bullied, uh, thinking oh, no. oh. You know, very traditional yeah. thoughts about like, you know, my manhood mm -hmm. is the size of my, my, something whether it be my biceps yeah. or another right, right. particular part of my anatomy and it's you know it just occurred to me one day what a crock I, yes. I i i've taken the wrong pill you know the matrix i've bought the the cultural hypnosis about what it means to be a man and yeah. i started to feel more confident but not from this like cocky macho place it's like yeah. Yeah. My confidence makes room for insecurity. It it, uh -huh. it says hello, I love you to my low self-esteem instead of I must pretend that right. I have it all together. Sure. I, I yeah. really learned how to stop pretending and I just had so much to say about it. I had to write a book. Yes. No, that's awesome. And and I also noticed you don't use the common phrase toxic masculinity you don't use that why why did you decide not to throw that one in there well in a sense the whole book is is an antidote it's it's the opposite but the the words and the concept are part of this pendulum that has swung mm -hmm. from macho to something that I don't think is in balance. I think we've swung to the other direction, which is men are apologizing for being men right. and apologizing or feeling shame about masculinity itself. Yes. And 
so there is such a thing as masculinity out of balance mm. that does, doesn't connect with the heart and that wants to dominate the world because it has forgotten what love is. Oh, and, and yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. I mean, that's, that's what toxic masculinity is. Masculinity without the heart. You know, masculinity has to do something. It has to accomplish something. It does want to make something happen. Yeah. And when when your heart isn't open, masculinity wants to make a lot of money or have a lot of sexual partners or yeah. in some way dominate or conquest or, you know, own 12,000 buildings all over the world. Like the more the merrier because there's this inherent discontent that cannot be filled by the world, that cannot be filled by accomplishment. Right, right. Yeah, now, and is that a testosterone thing? Or, no. Or, no? Nah. No. Testosterone no. is energy. Well, yeah. Uh, but you, that energy could be in, in the service of making a better world yeah. or in the service of an ego wanting to glorify itself. Okay. All right. So, that's, so that's what it, it's, it's yeah. the ego thing, right? It's testosterone is, is neutral. It's just, yeah. it's just fuel. Cool. You put the fuel in the car and you go somewhere. <laughs> right. So whether the ego is driving the car or, or your heart, your sense of purpose. Yeah. That that's a choice we all have to make. Right. It sure is, Scott. But a lot of men have turned off the testosterone because they think there's just something bad right. about being driven. Right. No, it's 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 mm -hmm. being driven, <clears throat> which is fine, but it's just kind of driving in the right direction for yourself. Speaking about which, mm -hmm. we talk about the um, the theme of uh, working with the inner critic, and you talk about that a lot in your book, Mindful Masculinity. So um, can you talk a little bit about that? You 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 share sure. the difference between the encouraging self-talk and that discouraging self-talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let, let's, yeah. let's just sort of say how... Uh, what? So let's, call, let's say that a man is a car. And first of all, it's very important for a car to rest, to be still long enough so that it can refuel. So that's what meditation yes. is. That's what uh, contemplation. There's, there. Are, it's very important for a man or anyone to learn to be still to refuel. But the inner critic mm -hmm. is a, a a belief uh, that your car will drive the smoothest and the fastest if you mm -hmm. put criticism in the tank aha uh -huh. yes and and, Not, and yeah. years ago it used to work like let's say uh, yeah. a sergeant would come up to a soldier and say you are nothing you are nothing you are nothing go down and give me 40 you know and and there were you know generations upon generations of people who used to get motivated and accomplish things uh, through fear guilt and shame sure. Yeah. The pure the Puritans were famous for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but generation after generation, that energy no longer motivates. In fact, it makes more couch potatoes right. than than workaholics. Nowadays, mm. most people respond to an inner critic with what I would call a couch potato strike, yes. which is like you can't talk to me that way. I will. I refuse to listen to a terrorist. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I'm not doing a damn thing because you can't make me. Wow. And so it's it's a, a rebellion, and I I think sure. that that's a healthy rebellion that that we yeah. shouldn't be listening to a terrorist. Right. And you know, a lot of terrorists, unfortunately. I mean, let's go psychological, Scott. Here we go. We're on the couch. Let's do it. You know, I mean, who's who's the figure in our family who it could be mom too? <laughs> who's the tyrant? You know, who who is that person who has been our tyrant or who mm -hmm. has been, you know, mm -hmm. making us feel less than? And Usually, then, it's it's yeah. the one who learned that his self esteem 
yes. can only come from accomplishment. That your self worth right. is intimately tied to getting off the couch and making a difference in the world. Right. And and the old old school way of sort of whipping your kids, men, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. but more men, and that's what we're talking about today as well into shape and thinking that that, like you said, is going to change them and the way that they feel and act. And they're going to get motivated. Heck no. <laughs> like you said, they're going to become potatoes and say, uh-huh, right. You can't make me. Right, exactly. My father's mantra when I was, when I was uh, a teenager was, you, you're so lazy. You're a lazy bum. Oh. And it was the more he said it, the more I, I was like, okay. That's what I am. I'm a lazy bum. Yeah, and I'm going right. to show you what a lazy bum looks like. Right. Exactly. And then, and of course that, and we'll talk about that too coming up, but it, it, it causes us to have that critical voice as well. So Indeed. we can say, I, you're right. F you, I'm a lazy bum and I'll show you how lazy I am. And then on the other hand, later on down the road, as we become more, mm, I don't know, mature, maybe we get angry. And then that's that critical voice and we turn it inward, right? <laughs> that critical voice. My God, yeah. I am lazy. Yeah. I'm not worthy. I am going to amount to nothing. I, right? Yes. My father's voice mm. became mine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, like, uh, as you mentioned, of course, they are they know not what they do. They're projecting no. their own inner crud and, and self-criticism onto us as children and adolescents and young adults and older adults. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't still be there. It's interesting, isn't it, how that parent is still sort of looking at us. And we, we just have all these little, you know, neural patterns in our brain that say, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not. And then we're, we, we spend a lot of our lives trying to prove that. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Wow. It's like my father's been dead for a long time, but there's still a part of me that's like, dad, are you proud of me? Oh, right. I, I think, I think I'm proud of me, but it would really feel good to know that you're proud of me. I've actually had conversations with him, you know, from the other side or whatever, cool. or even in my mind, I don't care what you believe, but they've been very healing conversations cool. where I imagine him saying, son, I am so proud of you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. No, I love that. That's beautiful. And who knows? Maybe he is. Maybe he's uh, gone into a, a lighter space and is saying, wow, I really, God, I should have given this young man a lot more love and a lot more. We're hoping. We're hoping. <laughs> and no, I, 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 I feel he, even before he died, he, he made his peace with, with, uh, with me, and 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 he he did express some some sincere oh. regret, and Good. yeah, we we made our peace. I mean, it's part of actually it's a chapter in the book. It's nice. Yes, uh, we had a. a what some people would call a miracle between yes. us. And that's beautiful. And I was so happy for you when I read that. I went, oh mm. my God, because that doesn't happen many times. And then yeah. that's why I have a lot of business here on my couch because, of Indeed. My, you know, but um, so yeah, you really have created, and I'm, I'm sure that experience helped you feel so, so much better and really think about it and embrace it and have that connection. But um, there's a lot of people out there who still have that harsh inner critic. So how do you suggest that we work on that and, and really mm -hmm. sort of dissolve it, make it go away? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's several, there's several things that I outline in the book. One of them is to turn to the critic. First of all, you got to become conscious that the most, the hardest and most important part is to hear the discouraging, shaming voice. Yeah. I used to journal it. Yes. Like I literally would write, dear Scott, you suck. You know, you're no good. Way. I, I would exaggerate it. Oh I would blow God. it out of proportion and, and, and I would feel better because okay. when, when I wrote it, I, 
I knew that 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 it wasn't the truth about me. I knew it was like some sub sub personality right. part of right. my psyche right. that that really wasn't in touch with reality. So blowing it out of proportion, exaggerating it, even having some fun with it. Uh, but most important is making the unconscious conscious. Most right. of us just feel lousy and don't realize that it's our self talk yes. that is put bringing us down, putting us down. Right. So the most important part is to become conscious of what's going on in your stream yes. of consciousness. Right. Journaling is a great thing for that. Yes, it is. No, that's beautiful. And then yes. I would end my journaling by writing a letter of love to myself oh. if I was love. Yes. So I would say, I, and you know who, who teaches this? Um, you. Uh, well, who's the, oh yeah, Elizabeth Gilbert. Yeah. She's been writing a love letter to herself every day for like oh. decades. Oh, no wonder she's so healthy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, that's. So I, you know, dear Scott, you are such a beautiful man. You oh. have always been doing your best and your best keeps getting better every day. If you could see yourself the way we see you, you would never have a doubt about how lovable you are and that kind of thing. So every day, a different love letter. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. And making sure that I don't just put attention on my accomplishments. Right. Because I don't want to feed that misunderstanding that my worth comes from what I do. That's the biggest male misunderstanding that men have to deal with. Right. I, I think you're right. I mean, I just, I've heard this so many times and there's, you know, the shame, which sucks. I mean, it's so, oh man, that's, uh, and I, uh, it, oh, there's a lot of good things that you say about the traditional worth work ethic in your book, but um, you know, it's all, it's all good. Work hard and goals and, and all that stuff. But as you said, don't don't identify yourself with well I need to uh, I guess it's competition I need to compete with this guy or that guy or whatever right and and mm. then really erodes your self esteem when you have those kinds of thoughts all mm. the time I wonder if this is true let me let me say it and then you and I'll unpack it together competition is a combination of testosterone and insecurity. Mm, that's, yes. what is, you know, like t testosterone oh. is just energy. It's just drive. Yes. Competition is, I mean, well, there's layer, there's levels to it because like, you know, the way I explain it in the book, if you, if you, can compete your ass off and be happy no matter who wins or loses. Yeah. That's kind of, I think that's perfectly yes, healthy. Absolutely. I agree. But what, you know, when you just, when your team loses or you lose and you're just so, so you know, my father, he, he's, he used to play tennis and he, he used to hit his knees with the tennis racket. Yeah. And actually draw blood. And that was his inner critic, you know, like you must do better. You're not doing enough. Look at the way you're playing. Right. Physical, right. physical violence on himself. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. You know. Yeah. Like, hmm. And you know, he's he was raised in the military, went to World War II. Sure. Right. You know, pretty much learned military tactics. Right to relate to himself and his wife and his children. Right. And is that, oh dear. And is that, you know, and, and again, it's going within and t caring for yourself and, and journaling, as you said, those journaling tools that you use are, are lovely. One of my mentors, you, you probably remember him. He, this was when I was first starting my work, first doing my internships and stuff. And, uh, it was in the nineties. It was, um, doctor, um, Oh God, I'm, I'm now I'm just blanking uh, about what his name because I've just, I have so many uh, mentors in my mind. Uh -huh. um, but 
I'll, I'll throw out his name in a minute. I have, I was blessed with working with a lot of people who, you know, were out there and writing books and, and I, I, it was just, they were in the hospitals here in Los Angeles. And so they were David Viscott is who is the one that comes to mind. He used to have mm. a show on CBS, but he was so, he worked in the psychological and psychiatric facilities. And he said to me, um, tell your patients, <laughs> tell your patients to write the hate stuff about themselves, their inner voice, that toxic inner voice that write those things down all right, on a piece of paper, tear it up, flush it down the toilet. Watch the toilet go down and swirl and say, bye-bye. And every time you have a day of these toxic thoughts, same thoughts, you write them down. And so this was his cognitive behavioral tool is flush them down the toilet. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> anyway, thought I'd share that with you. But very similar. But you made the transition of how, Scott, I love you and how wonderful you are. Mm -hmm. The love letters mm -hmm. to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, there's another technique which... You know, I, I, I'm not a particular fan of the flush down the toilet or take the inner critic writing and burn it in a fire. Right. Um, because I, I believe that every part of you, including, you know, your inner critic, is trying to take care of you. It has good intentions. Sure. It's, it, 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 I, I don't want to yeah. discard any part of me as if, there are parts of me that are saboteurs and that yeah. are toxic. Right. So for me, like one of the one of the things I, I might do is look at myself in the mirror and say, you are a failure. You look at what you're doing with your life. You're not measuring up. You have so much potential and you've been wasting it away. You just scratch the surface on what you're here to do. Shame on you. No. No shame. Well, it's really, it's really actually no. very liberating to, to speak it out loud. And then don't stop there, kids. That's <laughs> not where to stop. The second part is I, I turn into an encouraging life coach. And I say, you can do this. You are doing it. You, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're taking your time. You deserve to take your time. You're setting your own pace and you are making improvements and you're even worthy just for being you. Just you, even if you didn't accomplish anything, you are God's beloved child and God is turned on by you and you might as well get turned on by you too because you're hot stuff. And that's yeah. Yeah. Yes. hot yes. stuff. And then at some point I may turn to the voice that says you, you suck. And say, <laughs> well, it's called being human, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And say, are you, are you, are you feeling frustrated and angry at me because you, you just want so much for me and you're afraid that, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm selling myself short. You just want me to live my potential. Right. And this is the way you've learned to motivate me. Sure, sure. Like, you love me, don't you? You want the best for me, don't you? And that kind of disarms the inner critic right. when you connect with its loving intention. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it kind of gets quiet. It doesn't know how to, how to respond. And you can, like, take that quietness and say, I really love your support. Thank you for caring about me. But there's a way and a tone in which you try to support me that actually shuts me down and hurts my feelings. And yes. I don't like to be talked to that way. I'm right. wondering if you'd be willing to look at a, a gentler, kinder way of motivating me because right. that's going to actually yield results. Right. Yes. So you, it's a teachable moment for the inner critic yeah, because sure. you've, you've acknowledged, you've empathized with its loving intention. Yes. I agree. And I think every time we can have those thoughts and we can continue to have them and, and really work on them, it's repetition and rehearsal every day, 
to believe and know, you know, that that's it, it you know, inner shame or, or being hard on ourselves. It is part of being human and it's normal. Exactly. It's really normal and it makes us feel good to come out of that and talk to ourselves and say, you know, it's okay. Um, right. Really fun. So let's take care of ourselves to do that. But, um, and he's got his guitar. Woohoo! So, so just as an example, like when, when you speak negatively to yourself, but consciously, just to get the, the, the garbage out of the subconscious and, and actually listen to what you've been saying, as I say, it's not depressing, it's yes. actually freeing. And one day I did that in song. Cool. And I how did you do decided that? decided to, yeah. to be my inner critic in song. And I wrote, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the sorriest of all? I guess I am. Oh. Mirror, mirror on the wall, people never call me up to chat. I just sit here all alone with my arm around the phone. Am I too young, too old, too skinny, too judgmental, or too fat? Mirror, mirror, how I shiver when I pass you by. Mirror, mirror, please deliver me from my own eyes. I may not be a roach, but I sure come close. Mirror, mirror, go reflect some other guy. <laughs> it goes on, but I think we'll stop. I love there. it. Yay. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. I love that. Everybody out there watching is going, yay. Over there. Yeah. And do you know how many people identify with that? It's like, we, yeah, and we could look in the mirror and go, oh, you're a, you're a good looking guy. But then that little voice inside you says, Ugh, yeah, I really know who you are. You're not that great, you know, right? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that music. I love your music. Well, oh. you know, that's so fun to listen. Uh, by the way, we're also talking about uh, Scott's many gifts besides his singing, creating, writing. Um, and, uh, you know, you have, you're a life coach, you have workshops and of course we're talking about your book, mindful masculinity, a book for men and the women and who the love women who love for, them. It's not, that's it. But you, you know, know what? Um, it's been, the, it's been, it's been bought yeah. by so many women that I'm thinking of changing the name right. to. Mindful Masculinity, a book for women and the men who want to keep them. <laughs> it's true. It's it re no, like that's, that's, that's right. You know, it's come on. Uh, uh, uh. How can we get. <laughs> you're so funny. How can we get men and women too, but more men? Because there is that left brain imbalance. It's science. We talked about that before last time. Men are a little more left brain. Fix it. Got to fix it. Let's find the solution. You know, this is what I hear from women. And it's common. And we all know this. And a lot of guys are, I got to fix it. And that comes from love. But that's just their knee jerk. Right? Their, their left brain knee jerk. Got to fix it. I'm going to make you happy if I fix it. Oop, we got to solve it. You know, it's so mm -hmm, cool. mm -hmm. I love that. I love it when my husband fixes things. In th sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, when you want something fixed, that's right. He's got, he's got the tools. That's it. But when you want something listened to and acknowledged, and he takes out a screwdriver and says, "Here, let me fix that." Let's <laughs> 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 fix your brain. <laughs> no. Um, no, you're right. Not, not only does not is that not helpful, but it usually comes from insecurity and fear. In other words, what do I do with myself? She is upset. It must be my fault on some level. I must fix, must, must, must make her feel better. You know, it's like he turns into a robot. Right. But isn't that, but, isn't, to me, that's, mm -hmm. bless your heart, you know, for trying to fix and you get all, you know. But you're, you're coming from a place to help to help guys understand a little bit better and, and live from their hearts. So how, how can guys sort of get to living more from their hearts as they share about 
you know, heart mind coherence a lot of times. At the oh, end. I love that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 do that right? The the whole oh, yeah. heart math thing. Oh, totally. The Institute yeah. of Heart Math is like I love reading their information and their studies and all that. And, yeah. You know, one of the big proponents is Greg Braden. Um, yes. You know, just who I've yes. checked a lot, and so yeah. So yes. So the, so the simple question on the table is: How do we get men to live more from their hearts? By taking my. Six thousand dollar course, <laughs> only four hours long. <laughs> so, all right, let's let's get serious. Are you have I got a deal for you? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> so, first of all, there has to be interest and there has to be willingness. Yes. So, there is no technique that could work if a man isn't hungry for that experience. So he, right. it's almost like, remember those pizza boxes? You've tried all the rest. No, the, try right. the best. Okay. You know, so a man usually has to try all the other things, the glittery things that the world says will make him happy. Yes. Which usually, usually involves possessions and land and sure. status and money. Right. And once he gathers those things, feels the disillusionment, the emptiness, and the sure. depression, well, then he may come on his hands and knees. Or maybe the love of his life is saying, I can't stand living with you anymore. Right, right. So there's, there's usually it's, it's crisis, hmm. disillusionment, dark night of the soul for a man who's been trained to live in his head to... Um, come on his hands and knees to the land of the heart, which usually is the first thing that comes up is grief. Yes. Yes. That's, Ooh. yeah, that's, that's, that's just number one. Yep. yep. Once you pass through the doorway of grief, there's lots of other things to feel, including joy and, and hope and all that. But, mm -hmm. but for many a man, the walls around his heart can only melt through tears. I agree. I mean, it is, it's, it's biochemical as well, but you know, um, mm. you, you talk about in your book, like the manly man who hasn't shed a tear since childhood, right? There's that, that wall that's filled up. So uh, what are some of the ways that you encourage people who have people, men and women, but more guys yeah, yeah, that yeah. really are having a hard time grieving and feeling the sadness and allowing the tears to come. Mm. So how do you suggest they do that? I guess I, I tune into them as a human being. And uh, I, you know, in my office, I have, I have uh, stuffed animals. I have my guitar. I'm, I'm, I literally may say, hold, hold this animal and listen to this song. And I serenade them Yes. with a, an intuitive sense that that's the song that's going to break the dam. Right. Exactly. That so, sounds, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's, that's about it. Um, right. You know, the, also, and this is a, a, a longer, long-term thing, but getting a man to report about his inner experience. In other words, most people in our culture, you say, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Uh, or I, know. You know, I feel like I could feel better, you know? And so I feel every time you use those words and you, you then say like or as, right. You're, you're about to share your thought, your evaluation, your judgment about what's going on for you. And that's fine. But what I teach is how to point your awareness into your body. So there are certain words that are body sensations. Right. And then there are certain words that I feel Ooh. like you're not listening to me. No, that's not a feeling. All right. 
Right. I feel like you're being selfish. You know, and we we yeah. use I feel and then throw our judgments out right. and accuse, accuse exactly. people of doing things. Yeah. And yeah. then we wonder why our relationships don't work. Right. Right. I, I agree. I, I think that happens between couples a lot. And um, I, from what I see <laughs> from working with folks, a lot of sometimes women, we have a tendency to say, I feel like, and then there's that criticism, like you said, that follows mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. like, huh? Mm -hmm. What, why? What, well, uh, ooh, mm -hmm. what did I do wrong? You know, mm -hmm. uh oh, mm -hmm. I should be more of this or what, how, you know, and I, I think it's, should be, I feel, I'm feeling sad inside. I just don't know why I'm confused about my uh, job loss. Well, I do mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. on and on and on and whatever mm -hmm. is happening within them not something that, you know, someone else, of course, I feel sad because you have said words to me that kind of hurt me. What are those words? You need a dialogue. What are those words? Well, why did they hurt you? Well, cause I may have a little self-esteem and those trigger words are mm. This, mm. lazy, as you talked about mm -hmm. growing up, you know? Um, so, I mean, that's the kind of dialogue. Nice. If you're nice. Yeah. Yeah. Although I would shy away from uh, trying to make feelings logical. You know, okay. like if a man says, so why are you feeling that way? Because <laughs> his logical brain thinks that all your feelings have uh, a solution, have a problem, or are explainable. You know, th that's not that's not the land of feelings. Yeah. Right. They, they come from the right side of the brain, not the logical side. Remember Spock and Bones? Remember from, yes. from the first Star Trek? <laughs> right. They were always arguing Spock was logical right. and Bones was emotional. That's right. He was. I don't get it, Jim. What? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> right? So that, that's what was going on. Exactly. So um, with you um, and and what what brings you the most joy in your mm. life now? Hmm. And your journey, you, you've mm -hmm. kind of come a long way from your journey, as you've explained. And, and there's all these stages that you talk about in your book. And we could go into that as well. But I think, um, you know, we're kind of pushed here for time. But how do you how do you find joy within yourself? Uh, I. My greatest joy is making people's day, taking a, a stranger on the street and finding a way, sometimes with my guitar, to really connect with them and to uplift their spirits. And then I walk around feeling like Santa Claus, giving gifts. Hmm. Right. That's beautiful. So mm -hmm. every little bit of you know, we sprinkle, some people say, well, I, I'm just not doing enough. And I said, well, how did you react with the person at Starbucks today? How did you react with the market cashier or what, whatever, <laughs> you know, what, how, what, well, I, I, I complimented them on, on their hair or I gave them a smile and I said, thanks for working so hard. That's it. You're giving a little bit of magic with your music. Mm -hmm. thoughtfulness with your entertaining you're giving mm -hmm. that and that's energy art math that's energy that is being brought out through the mm, let's just say photonic conscious universe that you're yeah. giving. you're giving that and you're giving the love and the, and the entertaining and it's i do and it for selfish reasons do you now i do i do because it's just such a great antidepressant. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is. It certainly is. But also it's a win-win in, in mm. that universe that it is an exchange of energy. You're mm. giving, they're feeling better. They're giving back to you that you feel good within. So it all works well. And I think people need to find what makes them feel good. And I think a lot of it has to do with giving. And it's, like I said, just a little bit. All you have to do is smile at someone who looks pretty down. You know, there's a lot of people who are feeling down today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, really? We oh, have mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, well, that's a whole other show. So, another show. 
another time. Not a show. But um, no. So can can you um, yes, can you pick up your guitar to. and sing a little song yeah. for yes, you know, maybe maybe bring everyone else's spirits up a little bit today. Sure. Pertaining to what we were just saying, you know, a lot of people are there. You know. Many, can you hear me? Many people today don't feel life has gone their way. So many are feeling an ouch and need to jump on Dr. Michelle's couch where we can soothe your spirit and bring you back some hope cause you didn't get the candidate that you thought you vote feeling lost confused and scared you're not alone most of us are there so let's be there together and find an umbrella for this stormy weather right now and trust all storms my friend they all have an end and something good will come of it i don't know quite how but always good comes from the dark always wisdom will come to our hearts when things on the outside can't be controlled let's all take a stroll through a higher vantage point where all is well all is always well if you forget it ask Dr. Michelle. That's the best, Scott. Thank you for that gift. You're 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 awesome. That was cool. <laughs> and that is in our archives. And yeah. that will be soon on a CD. Um, anyway, Scott, thank you so much for being my guest today. You're always mm -hmm. fun and, and you're cool. You always step up to it provide everyone with wisdom and entertainment. Whoa, wisdom tainment. Mm. Entertainment. Well, let's keep working on it, Michelle. Between you and I, there's a there's a new Good. word. <laughs> it sure is. And again, pick up Scott Grace's book, Mindful Masculinity, a book for men and the women who love them. It's also. Yes. I create songs for birthdays, yes. anniversaries, all kinds yes, of holidays, no reason at all. A song for yourself to uplift your spirit, a song for a dear loved one. And you can find out about that at scottsongs.com, S-C-O-T-T-S-O-N-G-S.com. Scottsongs.com. Check them out. They're very uplifting, by the way. Happy songs. Great songs, and they have a lot of wisdom behind them as well. So thank you for being my guest on the couch today, Scott. It's always such a pleasure. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you, dear. All right. Have a lovely rest of your day. Everybody, thanks for joining today. And um, as I always say, take care of yourself first, and then you'll be great for others. And that's the way it works in the world. Take good care. Bye-bye. You're listening to On the Couch with Dr. Michelle, right here on LA Talk Radio.